Coro team, all the ministers of the gospel, help me appreciate. Help me appreciate our pastors from the pastors fellowship. Help me appreciate the sons of my strength, the sons in this house. Pastor Hans, Pastor Rihanna, Pastor Bob, all of you, I can't see everybody. Thank you. Help me appreciate every one of them. Help me appreciate my prayer partner, Christina. She's here this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Asante sana. Help me appreciate all the departments that serve faith free in this house. Help me appreciate all my covenant partners across the world. And I know Mike, baby, you are in the house. I know you have just arrived a few minutes ago. And I know grandson is in the house. <laughs> Help me appreciate yourselves. Give your neighbor high five. Tell them it's going to get better. Tell them we are about to come out of the darkness. Take pictures of me today. When I'm in the darkness, the light is about to shine again. A new day. It's a new day. Have your seats in the presence of the Lord. Today I'll be drinking a little water. Don't you make me nervous. It doesn't matter how many years I have prophesied. You still make me nervous. I was receiving emails that people in the U.S. are not going to sleep. Nilikuwa na pokea emails ya kwamba watu U.S. hawatakuwa kilala. United Kingdom, which was badly affected by last year's prophecy, will not sleep. Isn't it interesting? We saw them change prime ministers. Is it three times? Oh so Minister Hubbard did a good job, started us last the, the beginning of this year. From a message he brought so powerfully from the book of us, uh, First Chronicles. The chapter of the begotten. One of the most amazing testimonies in the Old Testament. Minister Hubbard delivered a powerful word on how Jabez interrupted history and changed the genealogy. Again, it's odd until a city was named after him. Somebody today must do what Jabez did. The Bible says the young man prayed. And we need to pray. I like taking us back a little bit. Because we've got to understand the dynamics of the prophetic gracing. God makes sure there's no mess, things tied together. Ordinarily, in the area days, I used to connect prophecy from about five years. But I will not go five years today. But I have you reminded 2020, our theme was from the book of Ezekiel 2022, where God said, I sought for a man among us them who could make up the hedge and stand in the gap on behalf of the land but I found none. At the time we had no idea that COVID pandemic had hit the nations. Throwing nations into serious mourning. Millions of lives were lost. 
mengi mamilioni kapoti 2021 mwaka 2021 the lord cautioned us to recheck on our foundations bwana katupata habari tuangalie misingini with the theme coming from psalms 11 na made katoka katika zaburi 11 if the foundations be destroyed what can the righteous do misingi kiharibiwa watakatifu watafanya nini for one entire year we checked on our foundations kwa mwaka mzima tukaangalia misingi the foundations of our nation misingi ya taifa letu our families our businesses zetu, zetu, and our relationships na mahusiano yetu coming to 2022 lipoingia mwaka 2022 the theme was from Isaiah 19 mada ilikuwa kutoka katika Isaiah 19 the enemy comes in like a flood the spirit of the lord shall raise up a standard against him Isaiah 60 Isaiah 60 darkness shall cover the earth giza itaigubika inchi gross darkness giza ku Yet God says Arise and shine for the glory of God has risen upon you As a nation um, and I, um, I appreciate help me appreciate the technical team for surprising me You got very good um, you, you did an amazing job But just to mention a few things We were warned about shaky times we were warned about tough times times mbuni. of uncertainty times of fears and concerns wakati wa hofu na we were warned about poverty level rising to the higher tukatahadharishwa kuhusu ya kwamba umaskini utakuwa katika hali kuu we were talk we were warned about days of distress and days of discomfort and pain kaambiwa kuhusu siku za dhiki kuu na siku za uchungu yet the lord Uh, encourage us that the spirit of the lord we shall we shall not we shall our hearts shall not fail because the spirit of the lord god will be upon us and that the lord would be a shield and a strength he would be a refuge in the day of betrayal we were warned about the issues that of back and forth that would cause anger and pain in our nation ambao italeta hasira na uchungu katika taifa letu Mungu akatuambia when the enemy will lay a trap for us to fall as a nation adui atakapotuwekea mitego tuanguke kama taifa he would be with us during the battle atakuwa nasi wakati wa vita and he would keep us from falling atatuhifadhi tusianguke didn't god do that for Je, us during Mungu the election time hivyo wakati wa uchaguzi that god preserved our nation from falling i quoted uh, psalms 46 god is a refuge and a strength a very present help in time of trouble psalms 46:10 be still and know that i am god we were warned against a force that of evil that that would come that would be experienced in the nation I shared that a storm would come a cutting across with dirt that was meant to bring fear into people's hearts making us to feel like strangers uh, in our own place or we have been knocked down and God spoke to us it will be a day of desperation a day of dispute and a day of disagreement Mungu akatutahadharisha kwamba itakuwa siku za fujo siku za kosa kukubaliana Did that day come Je siku ile ilifika Did it come All right that was the elections that was just passed God spoke to us Hiyo ilikuwa tu uchaguzi ambao ulikwisha Mungu alitunenea And indeed there was a dispute but did God see us through as a nation Na kweli kulikuwa na sintofahamu lakini Bwana akatushindania kama taifa God spoke to us that that very time Bwana akatunenea kwamba wakati yule He would be a prayer away Na kwamba atakuwa tu umbali wa maoni And God reminded us the words of Jeremiah 33:3 Akatukumbusha maneno yake Jeremiah 
Call upon me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things. The church called on God. And God answered us. I mentioned on evil. That would be exposed. The cry of the widows. The touching on, uh, on politics. I quite had given the word previous year, so I didn't want to repeat much. But I want on the on the on the the usual kind of which had become norms of the politics. The culture of dishonor and unhealthy competition. People becoming brutal and mean to one another. Shamelessness. Bad, dirty politics. Painting the nation a bad picture. I mention on stability. That would affect the nation uh, negatively. Hardships that would would make it difficult to grow our economy. I touched on limited resources. And, and I also mentioned on scarcity of different things. I repeated a statement that none of you wanted to hear. That you should have avoided borrowing. And I urged us not to buy another new paper of shoes. Thank God you didn't buy shoes. Because the auctioneers would have come for the new shoes. I did mention on the vicious cycles of bad dirty politics. However, we thank God as the church went on her knees to pray for the nation. We thank God that the that we did not experience violence as the past years. We did not ex experience stone throwings, burning of businesses. So I stand at this altar and say glory to God in the highest. It was an answer to the prayer of the church. On the education sector. This time, last year, I just mentioned my concern on children. I searched our children not getting enough, enough food which would help them in development of their bodies. I also mentioned on the struggles in the systems of education. As you have seen, I spoke about the, the, the security issues. We were warned about, uh, about in our nation that we should have been careful lest the, uh, the enemies of our nation take advantage of the year of election. I want on organized crimes. Adductions and kidnappings. I want on murders. Though I said that God hates shedding of innocent blood. To our shock, we saw the exposure through the media. I want on robberies due to poverty levels. We discussed on seasons that were about to come. A time of awakening and a time of outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And I said the church would be a key to usher in restoration and healing. I spoke about purging. And we discussed about uh, standing in faith and in truth. And not to allow ourselves to, especially during election time, to be compromised, neither defiled. We were caught back to purity to purify ourselves. 
I introduced number 22. As I'm going to introduce number 23 today, I have repeated again and again and over and again every time I stand to prophesy at the beginning of the year. Anytime you see a number, anytime, a number symbolizes or speaks about something especially to those who are in the prophetic gracing you have a better understanding about numbers and colors last year 22 we saw number 22 stood for master builder a number of climbing to the next level a number of agreement where the Bible says in Matthew if two shall agree touching on anything on earth it shall be done in heaven the church came together and prayed for a government that would fear God and God gave the church the desires of our hearts in actual fact talking about numbers 22 we also saw when two disagree and we moving to number 20 before I move to, to number 23 today globally as you have seen we were warned about the things that were ahead I mentioned on tough times economical shaking currencies being affected negatively I think for the first time we saw the strong pound coming down. We saw the dollar being challenged. We were warned of the many challenges that would face many nations. Losses of businesses. Losses of jobs. Unions and treats challenges. Now I understand Understand it better after I gave the word of prophecy. I have seen, in, for example, in United Kingdom, union against government. We were warned that we will we will say we will see some of the agreement failing. We were warned about economical struggles, political struggles which are not common, especially in the European countries, have become key. Tough decisions of even nations which are more than 200 years old. My eyes have been on the United Kingdom. Seeing, seeing them lose the Queen, the highest monarchy, and having a change, and I think now three prime ministers, and still they still going through some challenges. We saw and we were warned that people would be struggling to make ends meet. I think United Kingdom, if you check in your calendar, I saw just before Christmas they will have strikes going on until 7th of January or something like that. Can you imagine having strikes every day? Can you imagine having strikes in hospitals and ambulances, doctors and nurses, trains and every transport? Why? Why are people striking? Because of the high, high 
high high bills that they can't even afford to pay kwa ajili ya mambo mengi ambao wanatakana kulipa ambao hawezi wakalipa i know this cuts across europe uh, pastor hans you they talk about gas and electricity during winter najua hii inaguza europa kwa ajili ya wananena kuhusu gesi na hata stima wakati huu wa baridi we are so blessed of god that we don't have winter in kenya so we have never experienced winter tumebarikiwa hapa kenya kwa ajili hatuna wakati wa baridi hatuna wakati ule wa baridi but you can never imagine not having electricity neither gas and it is snowing outside hebu fikiria kwamba hauna gesi ama stima wakati kuko na theluji kuli european countries the challenges have been have been overwhelming ya kwamba katika taifa za europa kuko na changamoto zaidi unaffordable bills na hata mambo mengi ambayo hawezi kulipa we have people in united states where they have been paying gas like buying popcorns najua kuna kule amerikani kuna watu ambao wananunua gesi ni kama wananunua zile mine za zile the prices of fuel has gone high lakini leo bei ya mafuta imeenda juu trade and businesses were badly have been badly affected uchumi pia umeadhirika zaidi people frustrated watu wanakosa tumaini anger that's why there are demonstrations hasira ndio kwa ajili kuko na maandamano people feeling cheated by watu, their systems which they have trusted wamedanganywa na mbinu zao ambao wametumaini kwa miaka mingi. about many questions without answers. Nikanena kuhusu maswali mengi bila jawabu. Robbery. Ulimwenguni kote. We spoke about change of the weather. Tukanena kuhusu mabadiliko wa hali yangu. Which today is more addressed as climate change. Ambao leo inanenewa kuhusu mabadiliko wa hali yangu. We anga. were warned about farming sector. Tukanena kuhusu eneo la ukulima. That the bad weather would affect nations and even us here home ya kwamba hali mbaya ya anga itaadhiri mataifa na hata huku nyumbani especially the month of december haswa mwezi wa 12 we have seen nations being swept by floodings tumeona mataifa yakigarikishwa na garika overwhelming snowing na hata kuwa na theluji ambao ni nyingi zaidi united states of america americani snow beyond imagination that people have been stuck up they couldn't get home theluji ambao ni nyingi zaidi watu hawezi wakasafiri people were lost and people died in cars watu wanapotea wengine wana katika magari yao I think Europe has not also experienced snowing like this year Nadhani Europa basi haijakuwa na hali kubwa kama ile ya theluji Small countries like Italy where they don't have much snow they have been rocked also by snow Mataifa madogo kama Italy pia wamekuwa na theluji nyingi imewafungia Think about about Middle East Hebu fikiria kwamba kule Middle East Rivers in the desert Ya kwamba mito katika nyika Mecca Saudi Arabia. Kana Saudi Arabia snowing and flooding South Africa kwamba Afrika flooding garika what can we say tutasema nini one of the things jambo moja we were warned about these weather changes hali hii anga kubadilika i mentioned about a storm nikanena kuhusu dhoruba that would sweep a little country ambao itagarikisha taifa ndogo and that country thank god that you brought it on 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 the on, on the screen nashukuriwe bwana kwamba ulileta ile taifa katika runinga that the effect was felt ya kwamba madhara yale yakahisiwa of that tsunami was felt in other continent ya kwamba ikahisiwa pia katika kwamba sayari zingine one thing i noticed jambo moja ambao natambua as i asked us to pray for that small country Nilapoku, it's an island actually nilipokuwa nikiombea taifa ile kwa jini kisiwa i saw a praying church niliomba kanisa niliona kanisa liombano now i know that the prayers of right, of the righteous sasa naelewa kwamba maombi ya watakatifu avereth much inatenda kazi kuu because god saved that little uh, island aliyokoa kisiwa kile kidogo so grobbery kwa hivyo ulimwenguni kote so we were warned about the unusual floodings unaona kama tulitadharisho kuhusu gari kamboti za kawaida moto drought hali ya ukame famine and earthquakes na hata na hata ukame na hata mtikisho eruptions milima kulipuka we have seen it all tumeona yote but through it all lakini katika yote we are still here bado tu hapa oh come on somebody give god a praise mzalimu tumpatie bwana sifa 
gross darkness covered the earth. And gross darkness the people. But we have stood up. We have risen and we are shining. And the glory of God is risen upon us. So Isaiah the enemy came in like a flood. But did God raise a standard against the enemy? The devil is a liar. So you agree with me and confess today that God has been on our side. And now I'm about to introduce number 23. And I have said that numbers always mean something. I'm sure by now most of you have Googled, you have rechecked the number. Around me to say that every time we see a number it says something to us. But let me say something. For the very first time in the, in the prophetic gracing that I have walked through or in for many years I experienced something last year that I have never experienced before. On the third of July, the Spirit of God kind of reordered my step to change the subject. Meaning half of the year, God redirected me into a new chapter. Meaning, God said, jump from, na, jump from today and step in tomorrow. And it was so interesting in London. I, I started changing. And I was asking myself prophetically. God never gave me a notice. Without knowledge. It seems God allow me to step into 2023. So number 2023 symbolically stands for a new beginning. A new beginning. Number 23 means change. Number 3, number 23 means transformation. Number 23 means progress. So on 3rd of July, without even noticing, I introduced paradigm shift. I spoke about change. I spoke about transformation. I spoke about renewing of our mindset. I spoke about new season. And I was, as I was asking God, God, how would this happen? And probably God saw if we measured more on the theme of 2022 about the darkness that would cover us would have been destroyed because it was a darkness covering the earth and on the other side floodings. So I believe beyond any shadow of doubt God wanted us to understand that after great darkness he would usher in a season of the light. The light would shine again. The light would come upon us. I want to decree this morning hope is round the corner. I have come to prophesy to our nation we can hope again we can dream again yesterday will be behind us we shall walk away from our yesterday we shall clean up our minds from, from yesterday I decree a newness of mind and I want to say to us 2023 
that. Let us be transformed by the renewing of our minds rather than being conformed to the patterns of this world. Lest we miss on the day of visitation. By now you can understand our theme our theme our theme is 2023 is Ezekiel 34 verse number 26 put it on the screen read it now with me no 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 I want you to read carefully I will make them who is God making oh no no no, no. I didn't hear you I will make them. Who are those people? Who are all those around the hills? What is the hills of God? I will make them what? And I will cause what? I have come to decree showers of blessings. Showers of blessings. Showers of blessings. After the dark hour, God is saying, I will, not the man, not even our president, not even the government of the day, God is saying, I will make you and the hills around you, I will cause showers, oh come on shout showers. Put your hands together, say showers. Showers of blessing. Woo, touch, give somebody a high five. Tell them, prepare yourself to get wet. You're gonna get wet. You gotta get wet. Take a picture of me today. When during the dry season, watch me when the shower. I'm gonna get wet, baby. Put your hands together. Give three people high five. Tell them change of order. There is change of order. Understand the patterns of God. God prepared a government and a president that fears God so that when the showers will come sit down, sit down sit down oh. God say to me in the month of November go tell my people I will make them not a man I the Lord will make them and the places around my hill isn't this place around the hill of God God said I will make them a blessing I will cause showers to come down. But notice in their season we will also discuss in days to come, not today because they want to be a bit short because I want us to push a bit in prayer. Joe 22, Joe chapter 2 Joe chapter 2 Joe chapter 2, verse 23. We also go to that. Can you put it on the screen? Joe chapter 2, verse 23. All right. Read it with me. Joe 
finish reading it? Je, memaliza kuisoma? Did you finish? Memaliza. Okay. You know Pastor Bob is an English teacher. Unajua Pastor Bob ni mwalimu wa Kiingereza. He will teach us something. Atatufunza kitu. The former rain and the latter rains. Na kwamba mvua zile za kale na zijazo vile. Combined coming together. Ambao zinaunganishwa zaja pamoja. So today Kwaivo leo I have come to decree Nimekuja kutangaza We are on recovery Na kwamba tuko katika hali ya kupata nafu We can hope again Tunaweza tukatumaini tena We have already come out of the ICU Tayari tumetoka katika mahali mahututi We are no longer in the intensive care unit Tuko mahali mahututi tena We are on the road to recovery Tunaenda katika njia ya kupata nafu Psalms 118 Zaburi 118 We shall not die Hatutakufa But live to declare the works of the Lord kutengaza matendo yake Bwana On the 28th of December Tarehe 28 mwezi wa 12 I had a conversation with the Lord Nilikuwa na mjadala naye Bwana God visited me Bwana akanitembelea And begin to draw a picture for me Akaanza kunichorea taswira On the story of Joseph Kwa ajili ya hadithi yake Yusuf How Joseph began to dream Jinsi Yusuf alipoanza kuota And his dream put him in trouble with his brothers Na ndoto yake kamtia katika tabani na ndugu zake And his brothers did him a favor they took him and threw him into ndugu zake wakamfanyia wema wakamrusha katika shimo and the pit was empty in darkness it is a dangerous place to be at hali hatari kuwepo it is a place of separation ni mahali pa utenganishwa it is a lonely place ni mahali pa upweke it is a place of scarcity ni mahali pa ukosefu that's why a grave is a dark place ndio kwa ajili kaburi ni mahali pa nyingi destiny preserved joseph lakini hatuma ikamuhifadhi he never lost hope hakupoteza tumaini because joseph understood kwa ajili Yusufu alifahamu There was an entire nation kulikuwa na taifa nzima that awaited for his interpretation of a dream Ambao ilikuwa inasubiri kutafsiri kwake kwa ndoto Joseph understood Yusufu akaelewa And that's why he never gave up hope Na kwa ajili hakukata tamaa If he lost hope kama alikata tamaa His own family jamii yake mwenyewe would have died and fulfilled Ingeangamia kabla ijetimia So again is odd Kwa hivyo kinyume ya mambo yote mabaya Joseph took his ground Yusufu akasimama wewe He was in the pit alipokuwa pale shimoni this is the picture god was painting for me hiyo picha ambayo mungu alikuwa ananichorea while he was thrown in the pit aliporushwa katika shimo there was not a mistake hapakuwa na kosa lolote it was by design ilikuwa mpangilio maalum there were traders passing by alikuwa na wale wa biashara wakipitia pale and his brothers rescued him ndugu zake wakamteka pale ndani and joseph's mission of rescue na kazi yake yusuf ya kukomboa began with traders ikaanza na wafanya biashara from the east kutoka kule mashariki let me say acha niseme somebody has been in the pit kuna mtu amekuwa katika shimo maybe they are traders pengine kuna wale wenye biashara somewhere mahali fulani who are on their way somewhere and they will pass by the pit na watapitia kwa ile shimo And the rescue mission begins. Na hali ya ukombozi itaanza. I have come to serve the devil with a notice. Nimekuja kumpa shetani ilani. If COVID did not wipe you out. Kama COVID haikukuangamiza. Ah, you can dream again. Unaweza ota ndoto tena. If the shutdown and the lockdown kama hile hali ya kufungiwa and you are still here today na bado uko hapa leo you can see your tomorrow unaweza ukaiona kesho yako if you pulled through kama ulipita the high prices of fuel and gas gharama kuu ya gesi na mafuta you don't hear and you don't understand what i'm saying wewe hauelewi nasema nini with the high cost of food na gharama za ya juu ya chakula kama ulikula if you came to church kama ulikuja kanisani if you took your children again, Again, to school you shall not die you shall live and declare the works of the lord oh today i've come to say you have a story to tell you have a book to write i have come to say you have a dream that you help president ruto to interpret you cannot die Premature. 
because you carry a dream inside you there is an interpretation there is a successful story about you that your village don't know your family might not know your brothers your sisters may not understand that God preserved you for a time such as this and that's why Jesus said he that shall endure unto the end shall be saved you have endured unto the end and so you shall arrive to your destination safely baby put your hands together get happy somebody If you don't have a mask, even if China is suggesting a mask, but we know that it is time for us to talk and do business. 2023. Write this. Psalms 1. Verse number 3. You shall be like a tree that is planted by the river. That brings forth fruits in season. Whose leaves shall not wither. And whatsoever he does shall prosper. This is the word for 2023. 2023 is a new season. It is a season of rebirthing. It is a season of bringing forth. It is a season of revisiting. It is a season of reactivating and bringing forth new ideas. This is a season of planning. Remember those who don't plan, they plan to fail. I am saying this is a season of revisiting your dreams from the shelves. I want you to listen to me very carefully. I have come to decree today, this day, this morning, it is 4.30 a.m. in the morning. Meaning, it is dawning of a new day. Darkness is losing its grip. Darkness is losing its strength. Because the morning has waged war. The morning is fighting. So church and God's people, it is sunrise. Wake up. Begin to dream again. National matters, write this. You are all aware that our government, the government of the day, is a government that was birthed through prayer to God. And I heard the word of the Lord say to me, that which you birth in prayer, you only sustain it through prayer. And I heard Luke chapter 12, to whom much is given, much is required. One of the major challenges of the government of the day will be to fight this monster that has hovered around our nation called corruption. Church began to pray the second challenge rebuilding the economy because the government of the day will have to tie itself with the prophetic word to understand the time and the season we are at. 
Because God is saying there is a great opportunity for the nation of Kenya. Kenya is just about to open up. Kenya inaenda kufunguka for the international trade and businesses. We're just about to step as a nation into a place of favor. I heard Isaiah 60, verse number 9, the ships of Tashwish are about to start docking and landing into our ports, bringing our goods into the sea to our nation. Great doors of investors are about to open. There has been doors that has been shut of our nation because of the monster of corruption. And there are many investors who have always wanted to invest in this nation, but they are coming back. But caution will be as we attract, and I want you to to write this one. As we attract good uh, uh, good uh, investors. We shall attract good and bad people. That's a caution for the nation. The growth of this nation will be steady and sure. But God would want us to be faithful stewards of every blessing that God gives to us. I have God say to me, patience will be a key to rebuild this nation, to rebuild the broken systems and put them back into place. I heard the Lord say, a time comes when Kenya will stand out amongst the nations of the continent of Africa. Because the Lord will favor her in the area of development. A day comes when we will stand out. We will stand out on the land. We will stand out on the sea. And we will stand out on by air. And having said all the those nice things. God would have the church to arise in an area of concern and prayer. Number one, I will not explain, but I want you to write down the spirit of sabotage. The spirit of sabotage. Number two, write down unhealthy negative criticisms. Number three, conflicts of interest. Number four, hunger for power. Number three, battles within and without. People trying to fight for space. But I heard God say, let the church keep her eyes open and in prayer. Lest we miss on the day of visitation. Security issues. God would have us understand. We must keep the the banner of prayer over the nation of Kenya against number one terrorism. We shall still be under terror attacks. God wants us to notice that. Number two, cyber security and hacking into system will be the order of the day. And I'm saying this to warn the government of the day. I also want to speak about the bandits. 
wale ambao ni majangili and i want the government to open their eyes and know that the bandits are not only from within but also from without nataka serikali ijue kwa majangili wale wasiwaiko tu ndani lakini pia nje organize crime activities ya kwamba ujambazi ambao umejipanga god would have us pray mungu anataka tuombe over those areas dhidi ya sehemu zile and to you the church na kwako wewe kanisa i had the lord say nasikia bwana akisema time of the outpouring of the holy spirit wakati wa kumiminwa kwa roho mtakatifu it is revival time wakati wa huisho it is time to equip the church ni wakati wa kuwekeza kanisa this is the day of salvation hii ni siku ya wokovu It is time of restoration. Wakati wa urejesho. It is time to make disciples for our Lord Jesus Christ. Wakati wa kutengeneza wanafunzi wa kuasi Christ. It is time to preach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wakati wa kuhubiri injili ya Bwana wetu Yesu Christ. On the highways and the byways. Katika barabara ndogo na kuu. I heard that this is a time. Nikasikia huu ni wakati. For us to reach out to our people on the streets. Kwa sisi kuwafungia watu katika kuwafikia watu barabarani. People in drugs and addict sex prostitution watu katika vilabu na hata pia katika ukahaba it is a time for us to savage our youth ni wakati wa kuwanusuru vijana wetu and for you young people na kwenu nyinyi vijana i had the lord say kasikia bwana akisema there is a yet another song na kwamba kuna wimbo mwingine that the young people who sing ambaye vijana wataimba there is yet another drama and music na kwamba kuna kudumuiza kwingine na pia muziki that the youth will hold to ambaye vijana na watashikilia we shall experience tutapa, tutaona great manifestations of the gifts of the holy spirit in 2023 udhihirisho mkuu wa vipawa vya roho mtakatifu mwaka huu wa 2023 concerning the education sector this is what i would say kuhusu idara ya elimu hii ndio nataka kusema before the systems have been set in place na kwamba kabla ya mambo yale yote hajawekwa mahali pake there shall be several bumps on the way na kwamba kutakuwa na, 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 na vizuizi vizingi And I heard the Holy Spirit say to me. Nikasikia roho ya Bwana akiniambia. One of the major concern will be the high, high institutions of learning. Ya kwamba jambo moja la husiko itakuwa masomo ya eneo la juu. And especially the universities. Haswa vyo vikuu. The fee structures. Ya kwamba karo ya shule. The equipment. Na hata zile vitu vya kutumia. Na hata mahali pa kuwa nao. I heard the Lord say. Nikasikia Bwana akisema. It is time for people to come together wakati watu waje pamoja and have dialogue on see the way forward na wazungumziane wajua watafanya nini i will not take a lot of time sitachukua wakati mwingi but i want us to look at uh, some few things lakini nataka tuangalie baadhi ya mambo kadhaa one of the areas eneo moja that will be a success of the government of the day ambao itakuwa jambo la ufanisi kwa serikali will be the health sector itakuwa eneo la afya if the church will stand and support the government of the day kama kanisa litasimama na kusa I had God say they will come up with ideas. That will build our health sector very first. Ambao itasaidia upande wa eneo la afya kwa haraka. Our people jumping everywhere to look for health Uh, for health uh, facilities na badala ya watu wetu kuruka hapa na pale wakitafuta matibabu that would come up very quickly hiyo itafanyika kwa upesi internationally ulimwenguni the west especially the west na kwamba kule magharibi aswa there is still a caution on the ongoing battle in the ukraine between ukraine and russia bado kuna hali ya vita kuhusu ukraine na russia that battle is unhealthy hiyo vita sio nzuri but what the west doesn't know lakini kile ambao magharibi hawajui behind this battle nyuma ya vita hivi there is an issue and there is a story yeah. which i have no permission to speak over through the microphone kuna jambo na hadithi ambayo sitaiambia hivi sasa so that makes the church kwa hivyo hiyo inafanya kanisa get into prayer ingie katika maombi because this will make uh, the west have little more difficult time to grow faster and to get where they used to be. Kwa ajili tasababisha kwa magharibi wasikue vizuri au kupesi wafikie ambapo wanatakana kuwa. And I heard. Na nikasikia. This is a season. Hii ni majira. For people to protect their nations. Kwa watu kulinda mataifa yao. People need to watch over their borders. Watu wanatakana waangalie mipaka yao. All their boundaries. Ama mipaka yao. 
There is something I want to mention but I will not discuss. There is rumor of war. But I cannot I cannot discuss that. That is just an issue of prayer. Allow me to say, I have delivered what the Lord had put in my heart to say to us, Minister Raymond. And I want to say, as we invite Minister Raymond, our first month will be a time to bring in the first fruit to the altar. God bless you. I love you in bits and pieces. What a word. Why don't you just lift your hands above your head and we have heard the word of God. The Bible says in John, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. With the word that you have received, we wage war. The Bible says in Hebrews 10, 23, let us hold fast to the confession of our hope. This morning, in the name of Jesus, you are an intercessor. You are an arrow in the master's hand. For the next few minutes, I want us to soak this house with intercession, with prayer. I want us to seal that word in our spirits, to confess that word, every promise that God has declared in your life today shall come to pass in the name of Jesus. Let the weak say, I am strong today in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the nations call you blessed in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you thanks. We give you glory. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Is somebody in prayer this morning? Do we have a church that understands that death and life is in the power of your tongue? And if you love it, you shall eat the fruits thereof. Father, we want to thank you in the name of Jesus. Everywhere across this sanctuary, in the tent area, everyone that is joining us online, if you're joining us in your house, let that house become a prayer chamber in the name of Jesus Christ. You are a weapon in the master's hand. Begin to decree the word of God. Begin to usher in faith out of your mouth in the name of Jesus. It is the prayer of faith. It is the decree of your mouth in the name of Jesus. Let the prayers ascend to the heavens in the name of the Father. You cannot be nicer when you are standing in the brink of a breakthrough. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. The seasons of defeat are coming to an end in the name of Jesus. Cycles of failure, you are saying bye-bye in the name of Jesus. You are stepping in into the new season, not just you, but you and your family, 